What's going on? What's up, y'all? Episode 15 of the Bobby Keith Podcast. You are now tuned in live. I'm going to send you some love, peace, and positivity. Wait, that didn't sound right. If y'all been listening, you know it's peace, love, and positivity. Take that, take that, take that. I hope y'all having a marvelous day, you feel me? I just got that marvelous line from the uh, Michi's verse on Herb from the Now More Than Ever project by Flatbush that came out this summer. You feel me? He's like, n- n- nothing's more creative than a hater's imagination. The most dangerous animal on the planet is two-legged. Cosmic retribution, baby. Come on, go on, get you. Reality, the marvelous illusion, the simulation. <laughs> I love that verse, man. It's crazy. Shout out to Michi. Shout out to Flatbush Zombies in general. But yeah, I guess that's going to be song of the week. Go tap into Herb by Flatbush Zombies. But my vocabulary game got stepped up with Marvelous. That's a beautiful word. Shout out to Michi for including it. And go check out that verse, the whole song, the whole project while you at it. You feel me? It's a real roller coaster of emotion. And I believe that's what an album should be. Um, I forget who was the conversation with. Uh, I was listening to a conversation this past week and uh, they were like, who's the album art? Was it Joe Budden podcast? It might have been. I'm trying to remember. They were just talking about Kendrick. I, I, I don't remember, but um, they were saying, what's the last album artist? And I'm like, damn, y'all not even bringing up Flatbush. There are albums. You got to consume it in a whole project. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. (laughs) Go check that album out. That's song of the week. It's kind of like an EP. I'm burping all over the place. You feel me? I got that guava goddess kombucha synergy GT. You feel me? What's going on, y'all? I love y'all so much. Thanks for tuning in. I'm sending y'all peace, love, and positivity again. Take that, take that, take that. What's popping, y'all? Yo. It's December 21st, 2020 when I'm recording this. The sun has set. I went out. I went out looking for the great conjunction. I'm looking for it. Where is it? Is it over there? Is it over there? Is it over there? Turns out there's clouds everywhere. I can't see shit. I can't even see the moon. You feel me? It is cloudy. You can barely see the moon. Like, like uh, you know when there's like a tiny little Swiss cheese hole? And you'll see the moon pop through, but barely. Like, there's a layer of uh, film, opaque. It's like opaqueness, you feel me? Hear that vocabulary word, y'all? Opaque? Come on now. You ain't touching me. My SATs was up there, you feel me? (laughs) Oh, man, I'm talking shit. What's going on? Anyway, I couldn't see. I couldn't see the great conjunction with my own eyes, but that doesn't matter because... It's a feeling. It's an energetic awareness. It's a raising of the consciousness. It's the entering of the age of Aquarius. And you know me, I'm the water bearer all day, every day. February 9th, you feel me? Air signs unite. Water bearer is here. Truth is falling out of my hands, out of my mouth, everywhere I look. And all I know is I know nothing. And if you can solve that riddle, then you solved it all. What's popping, y'all? I love you. What's happening? Man, so yeah, the Great Conjunction is... It's upon us. This is also the start of winter. Y'all getting this on the 22nd of December. And I'm recording this on the 21st, so you can do the math. I waited till the sunset. I went outside. I wanted to see the planets together, but hey, what are you going to do? It's cloudy. But anyway, if y'all were able to catch a glimpse of it, holla at me. I want to know what that feeling felt like. But me, I was more focusing on the energetic practices. I did a meditation today with affirmations specifically aimed for the Great Conjunction. For the first time in my beautiful life, I actually decided to write down manifestes, manifestestations, <laughs> manifestations that I'd like to work towards during this beautiful season. This age of Aquarius that is upon us. And go tune into that last episode because I get deep into the Great Conjunction and what it kind of means, at least for me, (laughs) what I learned. But do your own research, you feel me? Capture your own energy. Just meditate, you feel me? Get Get that energy up. Get that consciousness up. Get that vibration up. We all up, you feel me? 
And when you down, you can witness yourself being down and you ain't really feel it that crazy because you're just witnessing yourself do it. And then you're like, yo, the soul is the soul, man. This little body is just a little outfit we're wearing. You know what I mean? You like to get dressed? Well, shit, think of your soul like yourself getting dressed. And that's what you're doing on this human existence. Catch that bar real quick. You feel me? Anyways... Let me slow it down for y'all. I feel like I'm going fast. I feel like I'm going 111. Shout out to all my 111s out there. What's poppin'? You starting a new journey? I'm starting the new journey with you. But yeah, this is a beautiful time for manifest. Manifest. I can't say that word. You feel me? Manifesting. Manifestation. There it is. You feel me? I said you feel me at least a hundred times. If y'all are counting, shoot me. Shoot me a, a DM with the count so far. You feel me? <laughs> And shout out to my humans and my aliens and all other parties involved. <laughs> we out here for real, for real, for real, for real. But yeah, I wrote down manifestations for the first time. I did a meditation on these manifestations. And it was a beautiful uh, guided meditation by a young lady who was on YouTube doing, doing her thing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think you could find it very easily. I wish I could shout her out. But if you just Google great conjunction meditation it was like a 20 minute thing it's like winter uh winter vibes if you look at the the cover and uh yeah it feels i feel good i feel really good about it um i'm excited to see the possibilities that are brought to us and the opportunities that are presented and i'm excited for y'all i hope y'all have a raise in consciousness like myself i hope you all have a beautiful season a beautiful age a beautiful lifetime a beautiful spirit cycle Ooh, that's a tough bar right there spirit cycle that must that must some culture must have that that can't be original but i hope your spirit cycle is great i hope you on a <laughs> i hope you i feel I, i'm thinking about like a washing machine like the spirit cycle <laughs> let's clean that spirit up you feel me i think that might be what the human existence kind of is um <laughs> So my cat just did a little did a she got the zoomies you know what i'm saying my baby girl mango uh y'all probably couldn't even hear it so i don't know why i'm bringing attention to it but attention isn't that a cool thing that's kind of your focus that's your energy that's where your spirit is directed and that's why in meditation when your attention is on your breath you realize that you're watching yourself be a human <laughs> and that's when you can really capture your spirit and understand who you are truly and I'm just encouraging everybody to take some time out of their day, do some meditation, do some yoga, you feel me? Um, I'm not sure if you feel me, there it is again. <laughs> shout out to my humans, shout out to my aliens, but uh, I'm not sure if you're allowed to speak on things you wrote down in a manifestation manner, but uh, I'll definitely say I, I, I'm aiming to deepen my yogic and meditative practices right now, no matter what. I'm doing 10 and 10, which has been beautiful for me. And uh, like 10 minutes yoga, 10 minutes meditation, usually in reverse order. Um, but uh, yeah, that's like a guarantee for me. I'm doing the 10 and 10. And then with an elongated yoga yoga uh, session practice, whenever I'm feeling like it. For example, on Saturday, I was really zened out, you know, I saged the, uh, the crib. Got the sage. I was inspired by my man Kyrie. I saw him sage in the garden. You feel me? <laughs> There's another one. You another one. All y'all who are counting. If it's not at 47 yet, then what are we doing? <laughs> but yeah, I saw him sage in the garden. So I'm like, you know what? This is a perfect time to sage the house. To get this energy cycle filtered. Get a clean start. A new beginning. I just vacuumed this room. If y'all been tuned, tuned, tuned in, you know that. I've had this room that I'm in currently filled with stuff in my storage unit, but that's all taken care of. It's all back in the unit. That could be metaphoric. I'm not sure, but everything's clean and organized and it's beautiful. Shout out to episode one. Everybody who's been listening since then, routine and deep clean. You know what I mean? Ooh, wee. <laughs> I'm feeling good and green. Yes, sir. That's the heart chakra. I feel like I'm open and I'm just giving y'all love right now. So take that, take that, take that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me let me focus a little bit. Let me gather my thoughts. 
Um, speaking of green, I had this random thought. I feel like guac, like guacamole, uh, guacamole, uh, guac, however you want to say it, is probably one of the greatest inventions of humanity thus far. I feel like it's got to be up there with the internet, uh, fire, the wheel. How important is the wheel? Can y'all break that down to me? Because everybody's like, since the wheel was invented. <laughs> I feel like we could fit. All right, think of this. Think of this. Alternate dimension where the wheel was never invented. Are we already floating? Are, is our transportation system strictly based on anti-gravity? Like how most... UFOs are described. Would that would we already be accelerated there or would we still be doing nothing? But by nothing I mean something because I feel like before we had all of this uh this inventive era, I feel like we were focused on self and exploring our higher self and our spirit and really focusing in on the spirit cycle. So I'm not sure what's better or what's worse. And I know that I know nothing. So I don't know. That's just some food for thought. Speaking of food, we just tried this spot locally. It's called Cafe Momo. And wow. This is Nepalese, Nepalese, Nepal, the country, their food. That's what this restaurant does. And it is... Mwah, magnifique. Man, vegetable momos. It's like dumplings, but they're momos. And I just got to say, it's delicious. I might get them delivered tonight. I'm not sure. See, Uber emailed me this uh, this little $30 credit. You know what I'm saying? But the app's been tricky. It's like I log on for Uber Eats, and it's like there's nobody nearby to deliver. Because this is really a DoorDash zone. I mean, and that's how I make my money, so... I would be doing Uber. Ooh, did I just expose a uh, an untapped corner of the market? Could I be the Uber Eats guy from Manchester because nobody else is doing it? I don't know. Sounds crazy. But I will say that uh, that nobody's ever available to deliver it. So, I mean, I'm going to try tonight, but who knows? It might not go down. Where did I come from with this uh, statement? I'm not sure. I was speaking of food for thought. Food for thought came from, was the wheel really that great of an invention? <laughs> and where did I come there from? I'm not sure. Oh, guac. Guacamole. Like, how good is guac for real? Have y'all ever thought about that? Like, I was craving guac for about two weeks. But Whole Foods, yeah, we don't go no, we, we at Whole Foods for our stuff. It's not... There could have been ripe avocados at other places, but listen to my story from the perspective of we really basically only go to Whole Foods for our groceries. <laughs> anyway, Whole Foods, the avocados, none of them were ripe for like two weeks. And then boom, we, we were in there the other day and glorious avocados. They were perfect. They were ready. Got home. You know, I scooped them up. And I'm not going to lie to you. I worked at Chipotle, like Chipotle, Chipotle. And say what you will about them. What they can do is make guac, like, delicious. I, I would damn near say, I don't know if I've ever had better. And it's a pretty simple thing, you know what I'm saying, guac? It's not that complicated. Um, but, you know, sometimes you'll get it with tomato in it. And I don't know where I'm at with that. I honestly don't know where I'm at with that. Because if you got lime in it, that's enough acidity. That's enough acidity. You can mix some salsa with your guac if you want to add some tomato flavor to it. But I don't know. I really like the way Chipotle does it. So you know you know me. I, I mean, I learned the recipe from them and then I implemented it at home. <laughs> I did my time, you know what I'm saying? And then I took the, the knowledge and information from said job. And I applied it <laughs> to my personal life. And that's a whole, that's a metaphor for anything you do, anything you you uh, learn, any anywhere 
you might think you're forced to be, um, which I kind of felt like while I was working at Chipotle. I was like, damn, I'm forced to be here. This ain't nothing. I don't love it. I don't, I'm not in love with this. But, hey, let me learn how to make that guac. <laughs> oh, man. But anyways, yeah, so this it's not secret secret. It's really not secret secret. Um, it's on their website. They I think they've even put out a YouTube video on how to make their guac from them. You know what I'm saying? Like chipotle youtube.com reverse that put my dang down flipping and reverse shit <laughs> shout out missy elliott you know what i'm saying that's a big part of your childhood if you were born in 1995 <laughs> like myself what's happening y'all anyway yeah so we got them avocados the other night chopped them in half you know took out the pits you know, that's the most dangerous part. I have a huge scar on my hand from an avocado accident. And there's some wild stat about avocado injuries. It's got to be the most deadly fruit in the world. <laughs> or most injury-prone flute, flute, fruit. <laughs> uh, for sure, for sure. It's got to be. But, you know, this was another job, a different place, another time, another season. And this was at... I was working at a place in Manchester called Milk and Honey, and it was a vegan spot. Not, a, I don't know if it's a great name for a vegan spot, but anyway, we had a uh, a smoothie that had frozen avocado in it, or it had avocado in it, because what essentially we were just reuse, repurpose, recycle. You know what I mean? So we made avocado toast and stuff like that, and bowls that had avocado on it. So uh, maybe if it was a little brown, not not good for serving, like. If your avocado is a little brown or your guac's a little brown, it's still perfectly fine to eat. That's just a little oxidization. Don't worry about that. Don't trip on that. You know what I'm saying? But we would put that in the freezer and then we would make a special smoothie with the avocado. So anyway, one day I'm out at three o'clock and it's three. It No, it's like 2.59 or three on the dot and an order comes in for the special smoothie. So I'm in a predicament. Do I make the smoothie? then go home or do I let my coworker make it and I just leave well I was feeling generous so I'm like all right I'm gonna make this um because I think they were doing something else or something something I don't remember that fully but uh so I go I get the ingredients for the smoothie everything's going good and then I get a chunk of avocado out the freezer but I only need half of it and it's frozen frozen so I'm trying to split it you know you know like a uh a kitchen work table like stainless steel so I got it on the corner I'm trying to split it in half you know with force with my two hands and then I'm like I gotta get a knife involved to get this going and long story long knife went right into my hand I was trying to cut that avocado frozen it wasn't even like it was like pre-sliced avocado like you know what I'm saying it wasn't like in the uh in the peel or anything there was no there was no uh seed to get out it was just like frozen chunks of a little browned avocado. And I was trying to cut it in half and boom, right into my hand. But anyway, <laughs> that's a different deal. So be careful when you're chopping up your avocados if you're making some beautiful guac. But you know what it is. A little onion, a little jalapeno, a little cilantro, a little lime, a little salt, and boom, magnifique. And you know, you get the blue tortilla chips from wherever you get them in. It's a wrap. And I was just thinking about that while I was eating it the other night. Like, this has got to be one of the best things ever invented. Um, if y'all have a similar love for this beautiful creation called guacamole, hit me up. We do it as a meal, you know what I'm saying? We get four avocados, and between the two of us, we're both knocked out for the night. That's enough food for a solid four people. But you know what we do? We do it with two. Talit's like, I'd say a quarter, and I go ham. I go like three quarters of that. I probably eat three whole avocados worth so i got that good fat all in me you know what i mean <laughs> oh man how about we get into some stuff let's get into some stuff you want to talk about some stuff let's talk about some stuff i had a thought today i thought this thought was top level thought like if we talking thoughts this is like one of the i won't say one of the greats but this is one of my better thoughts <laughs> that i had this week anyway because I think I've, uh, as far as thinking goes, <laughs> I think I'm up there, you know what I'm saying? Right, put my name in the rafters. By the time this is done, 
I'm gonna be in the rafters as far as <laughs> thoughts go. <laughs> oh man, I'm feeling myself for real. Um, but yeah, I was thinking, right? So okay, y'all are familiar with the phrase "my body is a temple." So y'all are familiar with the word temple. Okay, bet. So temple, my body is a temple. Let's examine that. This phrase, commonly used in society, is kind of referring to... The, the person may not be spiritual, but they're certainly aware of their body. The person may be spiritual, saying that too. I'm not, I'm not trying to separate the, uh, the triad of mind, body, spirit, but... Um, what I am trying to say is this phrase is commonly used by people working on the body. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to perfect or stay healthy. And there's nothing. I'm not. It kind of sounds like I'm saying it in a way that's not positive. No, I treat my body like a temple too. You know what I'm saying? This is what it is. But I don't really be saying that. I be hearing that from maybe more fitness focused uh, spirits and souls, which is cool. So boom. Y'all know that phrase. Y'all know what it means. It's like, uh, my body is my body. I can do what I want with it. I can make it uh, super fitness. I can let it go crazy, whatever. But you respect yourself is basically what that phrase means. My body is a temple. Okay. So y'all know that phrase. Y'all know the word temple. So what are they referring to when they say my body is a temple? Temple, traditionally, anciently, right? Temple is a place of worship a place of attaining a higher spirituality, a place of examining self and maybe hoping for or creating a more positive, spiritually enlightened self. Um, so, for example, I mean, I draw on this a lot, but this is what travel does for you. It gives you experiences that you can draw on all the time and it gives you alternate perspectives that you don't know. But anyway... When I was in Thailand and we were visiting the temples, this was like nothing I've ever experienced. These were places of love and higher frequency and higher vibration. And this is just, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to offend nobody, uh, but the only like quote unquote temples I had ever been in previously were of like the Catholic uh, variety. And they, they it always felt the, the vibration is low. Very low. I've told y'all about that in a previous episode, but I got out of that situation in fourth grade. <laughs> anyway, what I am trying to say is when I was in these temples in Thailand, there was just something, something about them. Now, I'm not saying uh, anything is perfect because there was one temple that I went to that didn't allow females in, which I thought was kind of whack. Um, and y'all know how I feel about calling a higher power male, like those who say, uh, when it's, when speaking of, let's say God, they're like, he will. And I'm like, what? I'm glad that there's been a pushback to that with like artists such as Ab Soul, with God's a girl, the whole thesis of the last album, artists like Mac Miller, the divine feminine, uh, and then his connection obviously being Ariana Grande. <laughs> grande <laughs> shout out to joe budden putting that sauce on that grande <laughs> but she does the gods to girl thing and I, I could be reading too much into it but i i kind of think that it all stemmed from like uh soul right because soul puts his project out and soul and mac were tight mac does his and then ariana does hers right so i'm glad that uh all I'm trying to say is I'm glad that there is a movement for God being feminine. But where I'm at with it is why are we gendering something that is clearly non-dualistic? And we get gender from the dualistic nature of the experience that we're in, being the human experience, from the duality of the universe here that most of us are in. Um but where I stay at it, where I stay with it, or where I am with it, is any higher power, by definition, has to be non-dualistic. It has to be 
a divine balance of both energies that we know here as being masculine and feminine. It has to be a balance of both or something we don't even understand. So putting a gender on it has always been just wild to me. So boom, bringing it back to this temple in Thailand, they didn't allow women in, which I thought was wild, but that wasn't all of them. That was literally just one of many we went to. And uh, I still don't know why they did it. And this was a more recent temple too. I did research and it was completed in the 2000s. But it was very interesting. It had UFOs uh, in it and on it. And I'm still not sure um, why they did that. But what I am saying is even at this temple, there was just a inside of it. There was just this sense. And you can get all this at my YouTube channel, Free Plug. There is a, a, a beautiful video that I created that shows this experience. If you find the Temple Day in Chiang Mai... Uh, video I do um, essentially I give you the experience of this temple that doesn't allow women in uh, and among other temples obviously but when Talia watched it she was like oh I guess this this really feels like what I think it would have felt like but they didn't let me anyway we all know that's bullshit everybody should be allowed but anyway um, what I am saying is if y'all want to see this silver temple with the UFOs, go check it out uh, on my channel. Free plug, you feel me? <laughs> Another you feel me? Where are we at? 55? What are we doing? <laughs> Area 51, we out here, you feel me? Ooh, another one. God damn. <laughs> hey. Anyway, um, yeah, so my experience with temples in Thailand was a place of just a higher vibration. Um. There was one on top of the mountain in Chiang Mai that is literally my phone background. It was so powerful. Um, the vibration, the frequency is just, it was out of control. And this was clearly a place of attaining higher self. Like if like in uh, Buddhist culture, there's a lot of meditation involved. So what I tried to do, whatever temple we went to, I tried to just do a quick, I wasn't, able to do full meditations but i was just doing a little quick sit down see what it feels like to sit take some breaths in myself connect with my inner and then open up and look at the temple from this perspective and it truly is aligned with other dimension it's otherworldly it's non-dualistic a lot of the design um of some of these temples so what I'm trying to describe is temple, a place of attaining higher self. And from what we were talked about so far, body is a temple. So you can relate to your body trying to get better, obtaining a higher self, more health, whatever you want to call it. Um, boom. So temples are usually this type of place. Uh, and they're usually related to some sort of spirituality so calling yourself a temple, my body is a temple, is inherently spiritual, would be the reasoning and logic I'm using here. Now follow. There is a body part called temples. And this is the area left and right of your eyes above them on the brow line. Now... I just had a little burp. You know what it means when I burp if you've been listening the whole time. I'm getting into some shit. This is some real shit right here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, other, all, aliens, humans, everybody in attendance <laughs> to the Bobby Keith Podcast episode 15. Like, subscribe. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Free ads. I love that shit. I love when people are about to get to a huge piece of information. Just like I'm about to do for y'all. And then throw a little promo in. So I was just making fun of that. I hope y'all appreciate that. But anyway, follow me. There's a piece of body part called the temple. And this is the brow line, essentially, on the right and left side. Now tell me, ladies, gentlemen, humans, aliens, other, what exists in the middle of the brow line in between the quote-unquote temples? I'll give you a second. Ah, yes, the pineal gland, the third eye. This is directly in between the temples, as so we call them, body part of our foch, our face, <laughs> our punum. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and I find that rather fascinating. I had this thought this morning. And like the gates of Eleven, in between exists this non-dualistic reality. And that is what we can access through our third eye, our pineal gland, through inner work and focus on higher self ascension and creating a better life for you and those around you. And I'm just, I'm hoping that empty moment is allowing you to sink in. And if this means nothing to you, then that's okay. It could be foolishness, but I think this is real stuff, real truth. This is a crazy thing I stumbled upon, a beautiful piece of information. Now, what I would love to do is experience, okay, so hold on. Now, let me break down. So <laughs> if your third eye is directly in the temples of your head, in your noggin, <laughs> in your kepi, then you're all in a, some, a practice like meditation, you are already two layers into your temple. If you say your body is a temple, um, this is one layer of temple, if, you're, if you follow, then in your meditation, you are another layer of temple deep. You are get diving deep with me. Thus, your third eye being in between your temples inside of your body, which is a temple. And now I can only imagine what this feeling would be like with this information inside of an actual temple. <laughs> imagine. Oh, I'm so excited to meditate in a temple somewhere in the world. <laughs> um, and I guess that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> That would be incredible. <laughs> got to get back to Thailand. Got to get to India. Got to get to Nepal, right? Because I was just talking about Nepal and Nepalese food. I can't wait. I can't wait to get over there. I can't wait to get over here, over there, everywhere. You feel me? That's what travel does. It gives you experience, reference points, and a greater sense of being and belonging in the planet. Um, at least for me, anyway. <laughs> uh, it, it, are are y'all? Does anybody out there? Does anybody hear me? Did y'all? Did that? Did that do anything for y'all? Because to me, that was like one of the greatest thoughts ever. At least for this week, <laughs> like your temples are. I'm t I'm like you hear this? That's like that's me hitting my temples. That's the brow line. That's the right and left. You know when you rub that area if you're trying to make your head feel better. That thing, those are your temples. Third eye directly in between them. Coincidence? That's a cosmic coincidence, if anything. Shout out to my day one listeners. That's episode two, I think. Cosmic coincidence. Shout out to y'all if you've been tuned in. And yo, first things first, I am beyond grateful and sincerely humbled that any of you listen to me. My heart spills with love to y'all. My heart spills with love to all. But man, last night... I just had a message from a friend who listened and really listened because she told me a detail from late in the podcast. And I'm just, man, I, I almost broke into tears. I, I basically did. You know that when your eyes are, uh, you know, all watery, it's just like, oh, I could cry. Oh, man. That happened. I'm just sincerely grateful, humbled. And thank you. Thank you to everybody who is making making this journey so beautiful and so loving. And we're forming a little community. I have people, I've had people reach out. And man, it's really cool to feel this community. And feel free to reach out. You know, I love y'all. I love to tap in. I love that we have a community forming. And it's so cool, you know. Man, that's it. That's it. I love y'all. That's a, I, I was just saying, like, last night, that really, really, really got me, you know? It's like I said last week, um, this great conjunction, let's tie this knot together, you feel me? 
this is for at least my sign and my group. And this part, well, I'll just say shout out to you, Megan. You know, she's born the day after me. So she's Feb 10 and I'm Feb 9. And, um, you know, we kind of had the same reading according to the astrology happening right now in front of our eyes, you know? This is an age where the ice around <laughs> the perception of the Aquarian being is melting. You're going to see us for real, for real, in a respect, you know? <laughs> Understand, like Braun said, put some respect on my name. Like Birdman said, put some respect on my name. You know what I'm saying? This is for real. It feels good to be heard. It feels really good to be heard. I do a lot of listening. I really do. I pay attention. My attentive ions are spent every day. I pay those ions. You know what I'm saying? If you view your attention kind of like that, your your ions, because that's kind of what this is all based on, right? Um, if you follow, you follow. If you don't, whatever. Like, just hear me out for a second. Um, I spend my ions. I replenish them in my sleep. <laughs> and I get more ions to spend the next day. And I pay my attentive ions. You know what I mean? I love learning. I love attending, attentiveness, <laughs> giving attention. And it's just really cool to be heard. And I don't know if it's getting attention. Um, it could be. It could be for sure. That's probably a big part of it psychologically. Uh, I don't know, though. I definitely got attention um, from loved ones as a youth. But, you know, there's a lot that goes into the only child syndrome, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But that's neither here nor there. We'll dive deeper as we get deeper into this journey. But this is only episode 15. Shout out to y'all getting tuned in right now. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tune into the Bobby Keith podcast. We drop every Tuesday morning, you feel me? <laughs> Until we can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. How am I going to do this um, when I get back to being able to travel? Am I going to do a couple episodes and have them on back stock? Am I going to uh, am I gonna uh, bring the equipment along with me? I think that's a better option, but uh, we'll see as that time approaches. But for now, we got more to talk about today. You thought it was over. Nah. No. <laughs> it ain't over. You feel me? We are. Uh, you feel me? Where's the counter at? Where is the counter at? Man, did we pass 60 yet? Who's counting? If anybody's counting, I'm going to need a count at the end of the episode. Shoot me that message. I'm bobby.keef on Insta. That's where you can find me if you want to communicate with me in the reality that we exist in. Woo! You can send me that interdimensional love, though, if you want to. Um, Yeah. <laughs> I love y'all. I'm sending y'all love, peace, love, and positivity. But let's shift a little bit. Let's let's shift. Let's shift gears. Um, man, gears, cars. Ooh, wee. If y'all know me, you know I got a Prius. You know I got that hybrid. If I had that serious squat, I'd probably be Tesla'd out right now. You know what I'm saying? But that day will come. That day will come where uh, there'll be enough guacamole for everybody in my circle, in my present. Everybody I know, you know what I'm saying? We all going to be Tesla'd out. You feel me? Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. <laughs> Unless some other cool shit comes out like that. Hummer electric vehicle. Ooh, that Volkswagen bus electric vehicle. Oh, man. And I know the, 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 the contrarians will point out the electric uh the battery process for that is more dangerous to the environment i feel you bro but here's my plan i plan on having the solar panels on my dang roof and i'm gonna get that energy from the sun and i know that yes to create these things there's a lot of uh stuff that's harmful but at some point the balance scales are gonna go off like you know with the solar electricity the people who have the roof panels like, it costs you a lot up front, but after X amount of years, boom, it's over. <laughs> Your energy is free. I mean, obviously, depending upon how many times you use the washing machine and if you have enough panels and if you're in a... If you're in London, it's probably... Or uh, Seattle or any historically cloudy place, it's probably harder to live that way. But y'all know what I'm getting at. But anyway, my Prius, my baby, my darling... <laughs> Quite literally how I make my money because I deliver food. <laughs> so I don't do it on foot because I don't live in a major city. So I'm driving. And, you know, I needed an oil change and I ain't going to front. 
there was a weird sound that my car was omitting um for the past couple of weeks and it was bad it was like it sounded like i had a fancy exhaust a fancy intake or something and i was i drive a prius i'm trying to be quiet like i said i'm trying to have a test i don't want you to even hear me when i'm driving <laughs> well you might hear the bass you know what i'm saying but uh I don't want you to hear the engine. I ain't I ain't that type of dude. I ain't uh <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> Do your thing, you feel me? Do your thing, but it's just I, it never really uh struck a chord with me as something I needed. But anyway, my Prius, it was making noise. I'm like, what's going on? I needed an oil change anyway, so boom, I booked it uh with the 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 shop i use and trust uh and i booked it with an inspection too because i found out you could get an inspection done like four months in advance i had no idea um i thought you had to do with the month of uh but yeah uh and speaking of inspection isn't it weird that that differs by state uh i think that's weird like some places you don't need an inspection some it's every two some it's every four but where i live here in new hampshire it's every single year i mean it's good because you don't want uh it's good for the safety of people you know what i mean um because the cars are it, it's got to be your cars have the cars on the road have to be safer right if they get inspected every year and i guess that's good in an environment like this where we get in snowstorms so many snowstorms whoa like we've already had uh like on a, a couple nights ago we had a major one we had a foot just drop out of the heavens like and that was snow hitting if you didn't know, um, that was snow hitting the ground, a, a straight foot out of nowhere. <laughs> wild, super wild. But yeah, so I guess it's good that cars get inspected a lot here because especially with the snow, snow's already a bitch to drive in. And I, uh, y'all know what I mean by that. I'm not trying to put any negative. What, what, why, wait, why am I covering for my use of the word bitch? <laughs> snow's a bitch to drive in. Y'all know what I mean. But anyway, uh, I guess it's good that we get inspected a lot because there would be way more cars already than there are now messing up in the snow. So anyway, I'll go, I'll go in and I'm like, all right, let me get the oil change and inspection. I don't go in anywhere. I call in and drop off because it's all contactless. Um, so yeah, I, I dropped the car off and then the next, the next morning I get the call. Um, it's like... All right, so to pass inspection, you need uh, rear brake pads. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'll do the, the brakes. Um, he's like, this is going to be 300 or whatever. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. And then he's like, all right, then you need a rack and pinion unit. And I'm like, all right, I have no idea what it is, but I trust y'all. So what's the damage? And he explained to me what it was. Apparently, it's a crucial part of steering. And it explains the noise and why my steering's been so loose, which I have noticed. Um, I got I get a little uh, a little like swerve alert on my uh, dash whenever, you know, if you're driving in like slush or you're taking a corner pretty hard, it'll give you the ding, ding, like you're losing control. And uh, I noticed that it was going off more more than it usually ever did. So. I think there was, uh, well, clearly there was something wrong because it didn't even pass inspection. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, damage was crazy. It was like 1,800 of repairs, which is crazy. And there's a stat out there, and you know the thing with statistics is like most of the statistics <laughs> are just made up numbers. Um, but there, w there's a legit stat out there, and I want to say it's like more than half of Americans can't even uh, survive on a $500 expense. Like, oh my goodness and y'all know i deliver food so you can't expect me to have that much guap saved up <laughs> luckily that's exactly how much money i had and luckily my mom my loving my loving sweet mother i love you she sent me a little bit of bread to help me out you know what i'm saying so i don't go to zero because <laughs> i got an insurance bill coming up too um but you know that was a crazy bill. It came out of nowhere, but I'm glad my car is safe. Y'all ever get blindsided by a repair bill like that? I was going and thinking like, all right, so oil change inspection, that's 80. Uh, damages. I, I was like, all right, hopefully I can get, I, get in and out under 200. <laughs> it's not the case. 
that was not the case. So I got to get my savings back up because that got, I have my savings, right? Let's just say my savings is currently at 500, that that break even number. <laughs> uh, you always wanted 500 in your savings. And this goes back to what, uh, what should school be teaching you? I like to have a thousand up in there, but, uh, you know, obviously when I have an $1,800 bill and I deliver food, um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I got blindsided by that repair, but luckily I got some loving beings around me who were able to help me out a little bit, um, help the burden, help the load, but yeah, I got blindsided, but what I found interesting from that experience was even though I knew this was going to take me back to a financial situation, which wasn't ideal, I knew that everything was going to be all right. And I knew that I had nothing to worry about. I was viewing myself be calm in this situation. And this has to be attributed to my meditative and yogic practice. And I urge y'all to implement one of these into your life. I feel like the yoga association, you know, coming in with the TV ad, like, uh, <laughs> look what yoga can do for you. Look what meditation can do for you. <laughs> like, uh, you know, those don't do drug commercials. I feel like I'm that, but instead, um, do yoga and do meditation. <laughs> That's a great drug, yoga and meditation. Ooh, we y'all ain't tried that. I feel like I should start saying that. Damn, y'all tried that yoga? <laughs> It's that shit. That's that natural high. You feel me? Three eye high. Ooh, we. <laughs> but yeah. I watched myself be calm in the face of a financial disaster, as most would view it. Um, I watched myself be calm and just be like, okay, I'll be good. I'm not worried. There's a little hiccup, a little speed bump, but shit, I'll make that back. I'm not worried. And I thought that was really cool because in my past life, um, ooh, what a phrase in my past life. Hold on, I'm marinating on that for a second. In my past life, speaking on the past, right? In my past life. So you know how people talk about in their past life, their past lives as a form more of a, uh, Oh, what do you call it? Um, reincarnative aspect. What if we can access these powers of viewing a past life from the moment? And your quote unquote past life was just things you did in the past that you've improved upon in the present. And you view that as a past life. And this is a learning experience similar to a soul learning in a past life in a reincarnative state. Oh my goodness. I'm preaching. What's going on, y'all? Yo? You are now tuned into the Bobby Keith podcast. Sheesh. Damn, yo. That's big. That's big right there. That's big right there. You feel me? Okay, anyway. Yeah, so. In, a, <laughs> in my past life, I definitely would have, I would have bugged out. I would have freaked out. I would have thought the world was ending. I ain't got no, I got no fiat currency. How am I going to survive? <laughs> but I'll just say, all right, let me get that dirt off my shoulder real quick. Did that pick up? I don't know if that picked up, but my shoulders are clean. Hold on. Let me get the right shoulder. I only did the left. All right, all right, we clean, we feeling good, we living good, we living better. Damn, that was heavy. Past life, that's heavy. Heavy chase, like Chevy Chase, heavy chase. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Man. All right, all right, all right, all right. I've marinated on that. I hope y'all like that one. Shoot me a line if that resonated. You feel me? Shoot me a line if that resonated. Hey. But anyway, back to the back two. Um, yeah, so that I got blindsided by that, but I was super calm about it. It was like, no worries. No worries. Shout out to Bob Marley, man. I got to get into that dude's catalog. I only know the ones that everybody knows, but I got to get into his catalog because that vibration is the vibration. That's the love frequency 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Speaking of music, let's do a little music talk. You know what I mean? Just a little bit. A little, a little, uh, what's, what's Salt, Salt Bay? A little Salt Bay of music. You know what I'm saying? You could picture it. I'm doing it. You see me doing it. And you should see me chefing up. Oh, my goodness. Last night, I dropped a lid to my pan, my trusty pan. I dropped the lid, shattered everywhere. Oh, I freaked out. I like kind of froze. Thankfully, Talia was there to help me through that situation because I didn't even know what to do. I had bare feet. There was glass everywhere. I didn't want the baby cat mango. I didn't want her eating the glass because she's the type of cat that's going to try to eat glass because she just doesn't know. (laughs) She really doesn't know. But luckily, Talia calmed the situation down and everything was good. So, yeah, sometimes (laughs) even if you're the most meditative you, some glass is going to break and you're not, not going to know what to do. But luckily, my beautiful fiance, that's why she's my fiance, because she's able to help in situations like this. Because I was worried. I I, I somehow let the, the anxious thoughts get there. I was like, that cat is going to eat the glass and she's going to die and it's going to be my fault. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes... I do think that way, but that was my past life. Ooh, we let's round that circle. You feel me? But let's get back to music because that was my past life. <laughs> That's a powerful saver right there. Sheesh. Um, yeah, let's get back to music. Kid Cudi drop, Man on the Moon three. I only ran through it once to be honest with y'all, but I loved it. I'll tell you that for a fact. I loved it. Now I listened to the interview though, and that was. I don't know, 45 minutes. And I think the album was similar length. So, you know me, I do an interview. I'll probably get more from the interview than the album, usually. Um, And this was, uh, what was his name? Zane Lowe, Zane Lowe interview. He's not the, he's not the greatest of all time interviewer, but he's a good interview. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I like his questioning most of the time. Um, People get upset that he does like hip hop interviews, but, uh, it is what it is, you know what I mean? He's the guy at Apple. What are we going to do? They could let Ebro do it. Ebro knows a lot about music, but this guy Zane knows a lot about music too. I don't know. I'm neither here nor there with all that. But what I will say is that interview was good, and what I did learn about it, which I was shocked, is Cuddy kind of... My favorite thing of the whole interview, this is what he said. He said he views... The music industry, he flips the whole perspective on it. He's He says he views himself like an art student who gets a massive grant to work on art. And that kind of kind of earthquaked my whole my whole uh, my whole thought process on like independence in the music industry. Now, I'm a huge proponent for it still, but I never thought of the perspective being that way. Cuddy viewed himself and still views himself as an art student that gets a massive grant to work on art. How fly is that? That's the best reasoning I've ever heard for being in a a music contract. (laughs) How fly is that? Picture yourself. Picture yourself an artist. You probably are an artist. Whatever art you like to do. Are you Picasso? What are you doing? What type of art you do? You got that sacred geometry going crazy? Okay, now picture this. Ooh, you a chef? You chefing up that art? Are you playing basketball like an artist? What are you doing? Now think of yourself being signed to a label. Oh, ew. No, I don't want to be indebted to a label. Wait, flip it. Think of the label as an art school giving you a grant. That flipped my whole perspective. So shout out to Cuddy for putting that vibration into the atmosphere of uh, not everybody in a contract is upset about it or getting screwed. Well, money wise, a lot most people are probably screwed, but I don't know. I, I just that flipped my whole perspective. But anyway, he also said he's kind of vomits out the whole he vomits out albums in like two weeks, essentially. Like, once he gets the creative flow, it it just lets it spill out. I think that's really interesting, too. I love people's working process. Like, 
Some people will be working on something for years and years and years. And some people live life and then work on something for, or live life for years and years and years and then create something out of it in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Um, I don't know. I always find it fascinating because I find all strategies to be effective and I love learning how people do anything. Um, but, you know, with the podcast, it's kind of set up that I live life for a week and then I talk about life. <laughs> I talk about whatever, whatever I want to talk about. I love that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I love how people do different things, how how different strategies have evolved throughout millennia, throughout modern consciousness. And, uh, and his album's good. The last song was probably my favorite he was saying some he was spitting some shit you know what i'm saying and there was one part where he switched the flow and he was talking about the chosen ones and i was just like oh my god my head is exploding with love and bliss and yeah you know cuddy cuddy's the man you know what i'm saying um you can't you can't deny that and he got real personal in the interview talking about the great depression he was in and you know why the music shifted and did all these things and then why he came back to man on the moon three now at this time in his life and i urge y'all to go listen to that interview it was really good really solid shout out to cuddy shout out to uh, zane low for the interview and i want to shout out a cuddy song um from the the quote-unquote middle era you know in between man on the moons plural <laughs> and that would be the pain passion and demon slaying album i love that album specifically the song rose golden oh my god it makes me cry it's so beautiful it's such a beautiful song um for anybody who's feeling lost hopeless but knows they're greater than that go listen to that song shed some tears listen to willow smith and kid cuddy do their thing you know what i'm saying rose golden oh my god that song be making me cry for real for real and i think that's cool man <laughs> Tap into your emotions. They're there for a reason. <laughs> They're emotive ions. You know emojis? You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like emotions in a little picture form. And y'all probably heard the theory that emojis are the next uh, the next hieroglyphics. And I think that's pretty powerful, pretty beautiful theory. I think I heard that with Rogan and only Rogan, but it's probably all the way out there now. Um, I'm not sure if he got it from anywhere, if he got it from higher self or what, but... I love that theory. Emojis, emoticons, <laughs> emotive ions put into technology. Yo, think about it. Right now, at this very second, there's like a hundred peach emojis flying through your body from somebody's cell phone in Australia to somebody's laptop in New Zealand. But Nah, they're probably too close. Would it go through your body? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure uh, the transportation method. <laughs> May oh, New Brunswick is what I was thinking of. Australia to New Brunswick. That probably goes through where you live. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm trying to say, but there's information and emotions flying through the air that are captured on technology. And I think that's pretty cool. And shout out to music. Music is beautiful. A beautiful... Uh, receptacle for emotion and motive ions to be placed into the atmosphere into the universe in the special way by the artist i love it and i think that's where i'm at with music for the week go listen to man on the moon three you know what i'm saying beautiful go listen to flatbed zombies now more than ever i'll tell you i slept on that album when it came out in the summer i guess i keep saying album but it's like a six track ep but i slept i listened to it a couple times and i'm like it's good but now I listen to it and I'm like, damn, ain't nothing more creative than a hater's imagination. <laughs> Yo, shout out to the zombies. Boy, it's got to be, for me personally, greatest group ever. They have more impact on my life than close seconds like uh, Outkast and the Underachievers. <laughs> And Earth Gang, you know, I'm modern with it, so my groups are mostly modern, but in my book, 
Flatbush Zombies, greatest group of all time. What, what, what you doing? What you combating with? Wu-Tang? Yeah, I say that's a fair, that's a fair comparison. <laughs> they might win, but hey, Flatbush got that style too. You feel me? Anyway, ooh, you feel me count. We up to 74, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Let me know, please let me know. <laughs> but let me see, I talked about music. I talked about spirituality. I talked about this. I talked about that. I talked about what? I talked about wow. That didn't even rhyme, but you know what I'm trying to say. Is that it? Is it over? <laughs> Is it over? No, nah, I'm going to tell y'all a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of TV y'all should indulge in. So if you don't know about this, most streaming services offer a free month to get you hooked. Now, I just did this with Hulu, and Hulu has everything. Well, every like cable production ever, pretty much. Um, they don't have like the premium, like HBOs and stuff, obviously, because they're on HBO. But yo, as far as TV shows and series, they got everything from Comedy Central. They got everything from the major networks. You know what I'm saying? You could pick and choose to really uh, indulge in really only what you want to. And I was a hater for Hulu because turns out Tall is subscribed to the model with advertising. And you know what I hate? Ooh, I hate commercials. Ooh, wee. They are the bane of a television viewing experience, existence, however you want to say it. Um, you know, I wonder if they named that character Bane after that word, the bane uh, of my existence. I'm not even sure what the word means, but it, the bane of my existence uh the emotion that spews from that phrase is it's something that makes life challenging um, or something you dislike. So I wonder if they named that character in Batman Bane based off that. But anyway, if y'all don't know about Broad City, you are <laughs> snoozing. What are you doing? Go watch Broad City. It's on Hulu. Um, and yeah, go watch it. It's hilarious. It's got to be the greatest show, comedy style. May, uh, it's up there. It's up in the rafters with like Curb and The Office. Um, you know, I, as a kid, Seinfeld was my shit. And that was probably number one. But the laugh track does not age well at all. And that was hilarious in uh, in Curb when they play on that. When Ricky Gervais is like, oh, no laugh track, mate. They, we love that. <laughs> like in a, uh, in a condescending way. Oh, my God. Goodness, that was hilarious. And condescending, con, is there a pro descending? What's the inverse of that? Let me know. Shout out to episode three. Consuming versus producing. Ooh, wee. I'm on one today, y'all. I'm really in the zone. Flow state. What's going on? But yeah, go, let's go, go watch Broad City. If you want pure laughter, if you want smart content, good writing, uh, go check out Alana and Abby, Broad City, great show. Um, and outside of that, I've been hooked on Survivor. You know, as a kid, I watched Survivor. Um, for sure, for sure, it was all it was on whatever night it came on. We we had that on at like eight or nine whenever it came on. But uh, at some point, you know, whenever uh we just stopped watching it. Or just like family watching TV thing kind of stopped. Um, at that point, that show left my life. You know what I mean? Probably like uh, 15 or so. So 10 years later, it's on Netflix. So boom. A couple, like a month ago, I watched the seasons that were on Netflix. And I'm like, this is such a good show. It's so strategic, so heady. If you just get into the gameplay of it and... Uh, it's fascinating to watch human behavior in a situation where you could win like $590,000. It's a million, but you know, taxes, you know how that'd be. Um, and I just kept diving deeper into the world of Survivor, researching things like, oh, second place gets 100,000. Oh, third place gets 85K. And modern day, they've doubled all that money to keep people incentivized to continue participating and continue viewing said show. Because I mean, um, when the show started in like 2000 or 90, I think 2000 is when it started. Uh, 
that 580 hit different than it does today. You know, inflation, you know how that shit goes. Another thing that should be taught in the school system more clearly. Why does this work like that? And where's the gold? Where's the gold? Why is it fiat? What's happening? Anyway, um, Survivor, fascinating show. I'm hooked. They got every season on Hulu, um, along with a similar show called Amazing Race. If y'all don't know about those, this is like when they talk about... uh, reality television being brain numbing and stuff um i feel them and i agree for the most part but there's something about competitive reality shows oh man it gets me i love them i love them so much like amazing race uh i'm if you're not familiar with the concept it's like teams of two and they traveled the globe. It's another thing that was hooked into my subconscious as a youth that's encouraged me to pursue a life of traveling the globe because you would watch this show and they would go from uh, like wherever they start, like Los Angeles to Argentina, to Ghana, to uh, France, to uh, Thailand, to uh to uh, 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 the Samoan Islands and then finish in LA. Like, it's like a multi-continental traverse and you just see the world and it's really cool, man. And um, human, alien, other, what's going on, what's going on? But yeah, that's my dirty indulgence, as you would say. <laughs> uh, as far as competitive reality, I love Survivor and The Amazing Race, but I'm really hooked on Survivor right now. I'm watching that. Um, I'm just watching random seasons, you know, and it's it's just fascinating. And I'm enjoying it. I enjoy it. So, yeah, that's my TV recommendation. If you're looking for uh, a whole new world to enter, check out competitive reality. You know what I'm saying? That genre is crazy. And I know my mom's a big fan of, like, uh, the real world challenge um which is like mtv version of survivor basically um and i don't know i haven't got into that and i don't know if i will because like survivor is just so good but uh yeah go go check out that go check it out i mean i'm sure you know about survivor everybody knows about survivor but as watch it from like an elevated platform of like having more perspective on life and then watch these humans do things (laughs) things <laughs> to uh, all right let me tell you something there was this one dude there's a season i just watched and this dude uh his name was judd but on day one everybody called him fabio so automatically he allows his name to get changed so he gets a nickname right and then he goes out throughout the show doesn't really do anybody wrong kind of a similar style um that I think I would do if I was on that show. I wouldn't want to like backstab people or lie to people. He just kind of floated, right? Made it to the finale and won because he didn't uh, he didn't break any bonds or wrong anybody or backstab anybody. And then in the post game interview, I call it post game interview because you know basketball ain't on yet. Ooh, that's what I'm about to get to. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, and music. Um, I missed the E42 short battle. I will watch it on uh, Revolt TV YouTube because they have the whole um, battle. And I just haven't got to it yet. But just know I'm not ignoring. I just haven't found the three hours for it yet. But yo. Anyway, in the post game interview, he was like. <laughs> he was saying some shit, I would say. He was like. <laughs> yeah, you know, I. Um, I was really focusing on the energy people were giving and that I was receiving and I would know in a split second if I should uh, continue with the relationship or not pursue it as far as like forming um, friendships and stuff. He was just like, he was like, I would read through these people and we were in the jungle. So you know the type of energy you can harness in the jungle. It's very connected to nature. You can gain a lot of spiritual powers. And he was saying all this in the interview and he wasn't saying it on the show at all. He was holding his cards close. You know what I'm saying? He was playing the spiritual game. And I thought that was, it was wild. He won Survivor just being a connected spiritual person, at least is what the way the, uh, the editors framed it (laughs) but yeah fascinating show watch survivor if you are looking to uh to indulge in some 
some television you know what i'm saying you can let loose this life is balanced you don't have to not watch television i think that's an important lesson um you can gain things from everything if you choose to view it that way flip your perception change your mind it's the great conjunction you can control whatever you want to think about but anyway last but not least man nba is gonna start oh and happy holidays to everybody whatever holiday you celebrate and um to me christmas is the nba day these days you know what i'm saying ever since uh the family aspect uh diminished over time you know what i'm saying um just from living different places and you know you, you know what i'm trying to say uh but yeah happy holidays to all we just finished uh hanukkah a couple nights ago um we get it's cool because we had the, the hanukkah candles going and we got the christmas tree up and um it's not like a crazy setup we just have like a little a little a little fake tree like a couple feet tall maybe and a uh a little light uh hanukkah with candles and that's enough right that's that's all you need for the holidays um just a little just a little something you know what i'm saying you don't gotta go all out you don't gotta uh dive into the to the uh, fallacies and whatever, be contrarian, pro let's be pro trarian about these things. It's cool that there's a joy aspect. It's cool that we spread love and uh, communities come together on these holidays. Um, so yeah, shout out to the high holidays, you know what I'm saying? Um, and hope y'all happy, uh, happy everything. Because next week, it'll be the 28th, so I can wish y'all a new year then. But today, 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 I'm wishing y'all happy holidays. But yes, I spilled the beans. Shout out to Pinto, Garbanzo, Black. Uh, what else we got? Capanelli. Um, there's got to be hundreds of more beans. I'm just slipping, you know what I'm saying? But shout out. I spilled the beans, and we're going to talk about that NBA season the 22nd, so that's the day this podcast comes out. It comes out on the 22nd, and that's opening night for the NBA. That's opening night. Oh, my gosh. The holidays are here. Basketball is back. So, yeah, I probably won't be watching as much uh, competitive reality because my competition fix will be fulfilled by actual basketball. You know what I'm saying? My first love, basketball. You know what I mean? Um, Oh, I want to say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. You feel me? Ooh, is that 81? Is that Kobe? Where's the count at? Anyway, yeah. The game start and Christmas Day, I'm just so excited. That's been my my Christmas Day tradition, um, similar to how uh, people be doing that uh, with football on Thanksgiving. For me, Christmas is the NBA day. <laughs> I love it. I just sit on the couch and watch basketball all day. You know, Talia works because she can get that that super money on uh on Christmas and especially this year. Um, I can't really celebrate it with uh close family. You know, it's COVID, uh, coronavirus. Um, so yeah, this year, most years, it's like I'll do whatever obligations you know early and then i get home and watch basketball all day but this year there's no meeting up to be done and uh i'm just gonna be doing basketball all day and i'm so excited about it i'm so excited there's some crazy games happening um i believe lakers is playing the mavericks uh let me pull this up really actually because i have that ability and it'll just take a second nba christmas day Okay, yeah, so we got Pelicans Heat. Oh, my goodness. That's the first game. That's the opening game. Wow. We get to see the best young core in the league. You know, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, Lonzo Ball, and countless others <laughs> go against the second best team, according to last year, how it played out, the Miami Heat. Uh, the, the Heat lost Crowder. I'm not sure if they picked anybody up. They lost Jones, the uh, the dude with the 35-foot vertical. Yeah, I said foot. That dude flies. <laughs> I don't know if they picked anybody up. I could just be forgetting. I could be slipping, but that will be a great game. Then we got at uh, we got next Warriors-Bucks. Ooh, that's going to be exciting. Steph is back, and the Bucks got Giannis on that super-duper-duper duper max. Excited to see how Holiday and Steph, I want to see that matchup. 
Holiday put the clamps on Steph and Steph just doing stuff, probably still put up 40. We'll see. We'll see. I'm excited to see how that goes. The Net Celtics. Oh my goodness. The debut. The debut of Kevin Durant in a Brooklyn Net jersey versus the Celtics. It's not going to be his first game because, I mean, preseason's happening and the opening night, but y'all know what I'm trying to say. Durant on the Nets with Kyrie. Oh my goodness. And I mean, the Celtics are just a fantastic team. As far as teams go, they're one of my favorite teams to play with on 2K. Shots on my 2K heads. I got a video game deep dive I want to do maybe next week. Um, maybe not. Don't count on it. But I definitely have. I've been pondering some thoughts uh, on that matter. But yeah. And then we got Mavericks Lakers. How great is that going to be? And then to cap off the night, Clippers Nuggets. And we know that was one of the most entertaining series of last playoffs. I'm excited to see Luka. I'm excited to see, I'll be honest with you, I'm really excited about Mavericks, uh, Lakers. I'm really excited about that. Luka and LeBron, that's probably my most, uh, no. Yeah, I think I'm most excited for that game, but I'm equally excited for everything else. And that nightcap is ridiculous. Well, I think that's it for y'all, or this week, or however you want to say it. This feels like a long one. I feel like I... Went over an hour. I, see, I seem to be like a little over an hour or 47 minutes and there's no in between. <laughs> and I can't call it. I don't know why. But anyway, I love y'all. I hope y'all have a beautiful rest of your day, evening, night, whatever you're doing. Good morning, good night, good afternoon to you. Whatever it is, I love y'all. Peace, love, and positivity. Spread it for me. Peace. And don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend.